Word up gamers, welcome to the 1k Q&A. Yes, we made it! And uh, before I start off this video, I want to say thank you to whoever that one person was that decided to unsubscribe from me. Because without you, I honestly would not have been able to screenshot the 1k. So I actually really underestimated how big of a number 1000 is. So we actually have quite a few questions that you guys sent me. So we're going to break this up into three different sections. The questions I can answer quickly, the Great Ninja related questions, and the me related questions. Let's jump into it. Yeah, that's at 10k subs. Thousand Island Sauce, I guess? Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, French, and English. I have no idea who that is. And the last question is whether or not Greninja has a zero to death combo. You know, we've been living Greninja a lot recently, and unfortunately we still haven't found anything near a zero to death combo. Sure, we have zero to 30 with dash attack up smash, but you have a ton of factors to consider. Um, for example, Greninja is only a bottom 5 character, so how are you going to combo someone such as an Incineroar who's a top tier and has a frame 3 escape option? So no, unfortunately not, but we'll still keep looking. Going on to the Greninja related questions. Justin asks, do you think Greninja will be buffed or nerfed anytime soon? Honestly, I don't see Greninja really being touched at all. He's a good enough character to where he doesn't really need any buffs, but there's also pretty much no reason to nerf him either. Compared to other characters such as, you know, uh, Paulo Tenna, Joker, or Fox, Greninja's flying pretty low under the radar. We lack tournament results not necessarily because he's a bad character, but because he takes so much time and effort to get good with. And because we don't have those tournament results to go off of whenever Nintendo's doing patches and balance changes, I think Greninja's gonna stay where he's at right now. Alright, going on to SBO's question. If the Smash team were to buff Greninja in some way, how do you think they'll buff him? Honestly, you have to get the hardest read on the Smash team whenever they're balancing because they do the most awkward things to certain characters. I'll give you an example. Did you know that Greninja was buffed in 7.0? Do you know how he was buffed? They gave him a bigger shield. Oh yeah, with that shield, no doubt Greninja jumped up 5 spots in the tier list. What? So if the balance team was leaning towards giving him a buff, the obvious target would be his out of shield game. But looking at his kit, it doesn't even support an out of shield option. People are saying to make back your out of shield an actual option, which first of all you have to change his short hop height to actually do, or to give him a faster grab out of shield, which I don't see happening because his grab range is already massive. Something I would like to see though is reverting his hydro pump ledge cancel properties back to what they were in 1.0. If you did this and made the move come out on something like frame 10, holy crap that would be so cool. Imagine being pressured on your shield and then just hydro pumping away and ledge canceling. That would be awesome. But my dream buff for Greninja is actually just making his downer startup maybe like 3 frames faster. Remember the footstool downer chart I was telling you about in part 3? That could work on so many more characters. You could also do a grounded footstool into a delayed downer and probably get the sour spot hitbox to connect. I don't know, I was a big fan of Greninja's downer in Smash 4 and how you could do 2 downers in a row guaranteed, so I'm just really hoping this would happen. Also shouts and kiss on cancel, please. <laughs> Mike Lee Thuzzard asks, do you think Greninja will get better or worse in the future meta of Smash Ultimate? Better 100%. As long as you have me libbing him, I can guarantee you that Greninja will only get better and will find more tech for him. If you think back to all of the universal tech that's been found for Smash Ultimate, Greninja pretty much benefits from all of it. Tell me, what does Pikachu get off of attack cancel back air? Greninja opens up so many more doors with options such as down tilt attack cancel back air or down throw attack cancel back air. Same thing for dash locking. Can Joker get a kill at 40? Well, <laughs> yes, but can he get a kill at 40 from a dash lock? How many other characters can cover pretty much every ledge get up option with an instant pivot grab? There's so much tech just waiting to be discovered for Greninja and he'll only get better. Mobius118 asks, what control scheme do you use for Greninja? I personally have a really weird control scheme and I'll tell you why. Let me preface this by saying, control scheme is personal preference. If you feel more comfortable jumping with X, hey, jump with X. If you feel more comfortable jumping with a D-pad for some reason, you do you. Alright, here's what my control scheme looks like. So way back in Smash 4, I realized that my fundamentals were all over the place, and the biggest thing I could do to fix that was readjusting my control scheme. I would shield and fish for grabs all the time, so I mixed it up by changing my L button to jump and my Z button to special. Having my L button set to jump makes it so that things such as foot stalling, attack cancels, and down tilt full hop forward airs are a lot easier. And having my Z button set to special makes it so that I can do things such as a full hop shuriken into a frame perfect forward air, yes that is an actual setup, and C stick macro specials. Alright, here's probably the weirdest thing about my setup. Instead of having an up taunt, I have that set to grab. I'm pretty good at doing instant pivot grabs going towards the right. But because I have my grab button set to X, I screw it up all the time whenever I face the left. 
So instead of using the X button whenever I try to do an instant pivot grab towards the left, I use my D-pad up. I know, I know, I'm really weird, but that's just personal preference. Also, I think controller grip is actually pretty important and everyone ignores it whenever they're talking about their control scheme. So here's my sexy hand reveal. Let's go over the right hand first. Remember how I said I had problems shielding and fishing for grabs all the time? Here's my solution. Instead of having my index finger on the shield button, I just slid it down a notch so that my middle finger was on the shield button instead. So from there I'd have to actually think before shielding, which helps out a ton of Greninjas. Alright, let's go on to the left hand now. So I'm always looking for things I can SDI out of. So when I'm moving around normally, I just use my thumb on the analog stick. But I keep my middle finger on L and my index finger right there next to my thumb in the case I need an SDI. And if I'm trying to do an instant pivot grab to the left, I'll keep my index finger on the analog stick and my thumb on the D-pad as I do so. Again, this is totally personal preference. You don't have to follow this. The next question comes from Moist Towels who asks, What stick sensitivity do you play Greninja on? Wait, people care about this? Um, here you go. I use normal and I have no idea what low, normal, or high means. Next question. Mark Brumbo and Marshy YT ask how I feel about Leo picking up Greninja. Honestly, I think it's really cool that Leo's picking up Greninja and giving him a lot more representation because a lot of people are just saying, yeah, whatever, we'll just slap him in high tier. As far as Leo's gameplay goes, yeah, he's got the fundamentals down. He's the best fundamental player in Smash pretty much. But this goes back to what I said earlier, Greninja takes a lot of getting used to. I actually analyzed a bunch of Leo's sets on stream and I'm thinking of doing a separate video where I just analyze his Greninja. But there are certain things that Leo could be doing more optimally. The biggest thing I noticed was his fair timing. He was going for a lot of full hop fares and doing them right above the opponent's head instead of timing them right. Something else was his down tilt confirms. He was doing a lot of down tilt near forward air, which works but only on DIN when, you know, down tilt up smash is just a confirm or you could do something such as a down tilt attack cancel back air. So yes, I really do appreciate Leo for giving the frog a chance and really putting him out there for a lot of people to see. But while everyone's saying Leo's Greninja is super clean, it definitely does have room to improve, as Greninja players always do. The next question comes from Homemade Memes who asks, What tier do you believe Greninja is in? I see a lot of people claim that he's an underrated top tier, so what are your thoughts? Honestly, I don't care. I know that sounds really mean, but hear me out. What does it matter if your character is good or bad in a tier list if you're just getting results with them anyways? I'll give you an example. I'm from Houston and the second best player is a Bayonetta main. Do you think Bayonetta is a good character compared to what she was in Smash 4? Hell no. So how did Shadow PR get so good with her? He's just a good player, straight up. There's no reason to say, oh my god, this character is more viable than this one, or I should main Fox instead of Greninja because he's higher on the tier list, when you have the results to back up your position. I really do think that a big factor for Greninja in the tier list, whenever top players are ranking him, is that there's almost no representation for him. So if you were to ask me personally, I'd put him at top of high tier, that's it. Shaw Knight asks, if you could think of any upcoming Greninja players, new Greninja players on the rise, who would they be? Also, what is Greninja's worst matchup? As for the first question, I really don't want to sound like a dick when I answer it, but me. Yes, I know that's a ballsy statement, but hear me out right here. It's really hard to pinpoint upcoming Greninja players because you have to put so much time into our character. A lot of people are really inspired by Leo's Greninja right now, and they're picking him up, which is awesome. But unfortunately, I think that a lot of them are going to drop off as they realize that they're not quite getting the results that they expect. Some examples of this are Leo when Smash first started and Plop. I also noticed a lot of Greninja players starting out in my scene that really just dropped them and said, you know what, I'll play Fox. So it's actually really hard to pinpoint a new and upcoming Greninja player that's going to stick to him. But with the whole global health crisis going on right now that allows everyone a lot more time to lab Greninja, who knows? Alright, let's go back to the ballsy statement I just made. I've actually managed to play against a lot of top players from around the world recently and done really well. Just to name a few, we've got I Theta, who's probably the best Me Gunner player. We've got Flip Hop, who's the best Diddy Kong in my region. Cyanide, best Greninja in my region. Illusion, best Greninja in San Antonio. And Loge, who's number four in Southern West Virginia, I believe. I also keep a massive document of where I need to improve, things I need to incorporate into my gameplay, uh, habits I have, tech I want to lab, everything like that, and I know how to improve. So as someone that's going really strong against top players in my region, when Texas is already stacked, I think I have a really good chance of being on the rise. 
If you want a non-cocky answer, I'd have to say Crest, actually. This kid's only like 14 or 15 years old, and he's actually done really well in the Chicago region. I've been playing games against Crest for pretty much a year now, and he's actually improved drastically. So if you're from Chicago, be on the lookout for this guy. Alright, part 2 of the question, Greninja's worst matchups. I honestly don't think Greninja has that many bad matchups, it's more so that there are good players playing against Greninja. For example, I really do believe that the Fox matchup can be even for Greninja. But the Light matchup? No way. <laughs> if I had to say which matchup was the hardest for Greninja, I'd say Pikachu. Pikachu has near loops against Greninja that can work to get him up to 80% and then he's at up smash kill percent. Pikachu can also be really hard to hit. His Thunder Jolt approach options are really strong against Greninja because your option is to shield, jump over it, or counter, which all has counter play. And Pikachu can edge guard the crap out of us off stage. I personally struggle in this matchup, but like I said, it is doable. As long as you're not playing against Zizan. Alright, I've also seen a lot of comments about the instant double jump tech that I mentioned in part 1. A Greninja player on the Discord by the name of Nick3 did a ton of research on this and he can address this a lot better than I can. So here's what you do. You open up Discord, go to the Greninja server, open up the metagame channel, and go to pin messages. Scroll up until you see this. Here's all the research that Nick3 did over Dash Attack 4 there. I'm also going to link a text document in the description if you guys want to check it out. Alright, last Greninja question. Withers asks, who's your favorite Greninja player? Well, if you look at the number of clips I used from him in the Greninja guide, it's pretty obvious that it's Venia. Venia has a way of using Greninja that no other player has. Sometimes I'll watch Venia and wonder if I'm playing the same character as him. The way that he just moves around in neutral, plays neutral so fast, it's crazy to watch all the things that he does. Back when I was at Tapo in Smash 4, I was actually really struggling with the Ganon matchup, and I wanted to find out how to improve. The Greninja Discord had a document of matchups that you could watch on YouTube so that if you wanted to watch a Ganon matchup or a Fox matchup, you could go right to it. I watched the Ganon matchup that Venia played and oh my god, the way he moved was so effortless and I like became inspired by him. I was actually taking notes on all of his options that he would do, um, what he would do in disadvantage, what he'd do in advantage, the best combos that he would go for, and I actually still have those notes on my iPhone. This really opened up my analysis type gameplay, where I kind of just analyze the scenario say, alright, what options does my opponent have, what do I have, how can I beat this out? And just watching Venia really opened up a ton of doors for me. Venia is also a really great guy and does a ton for the Greninja community. Um, he's always putting out matchup charts, giving people feedback, saying, alright, this is uh, what you can do in this scenario. Really interactive on stream. He he's honestly an inspiration to me. <laughs> Alright, that's gonna do it for the Greninja related questions. Let's go on to the highly anticipated question, are you German? Um, not in the way that you would expect. Yes, I am German on my dad's side, but I was not raised in Germany. Um, I've been to Dresden and Frankfurt, I don't speak German yet, but uh, that's about as German as I am. And why do I know the German song? I'll be honest with you guys, my music taste is really weird. It can be anything from like Russian pop to German rap to... But whatever, it's all over the place. Whenever I'm making the guides, I actually take a lot of inspiration from this Team Fortress 2 YouTuber that I would watch back when I was like 16 in high school. And I noticed that there's a lot of things that kind of correlate between games. Check out this clip for example. The definition I use and the definition all spies should use is that movement is a channel, the main channel, in which players use to communicate with each other that's completely open to being manipulated. Something that really helped me out with learning how to play Greninja is getting rid of my old definition of movement. It's not just going from one place to another. Um, in Smash, it's really a channel that you can communicate through your players. You Pretty know? much word for word, I used this person's definition of movement from a first person shooter and translated it to a platform fighter. And it totally makes sense! What's the point of movement if your opponent knows what you're gonna do? You just have to really mix it up. Also, I'm a really big fan of Slurgy's music taste, and I'm always looking through his playlist for new songs to use in the guide. So yeah, that's where the rap song came from. Okay, apparently Pedro Pasotti thinks I'm not German and he thinks I'm Brazilian. No, no, eu não sou brasileiro. Eu apenas aprendi como falar português por quase cinco anos já. Então sim, eu posso falar português, mas honestamente nem visitei o Brasil. A próxima pe... Oh, sorry. The next question comes from Mocha. It's cool that you speak a lot of languages, but where were you actually born? 
Straight up, I'm from Texas. A lot of people think that you have to be like some kind of super foreigner in order to learn languages, but the amount of diversity that we have in Texas is actually super underrated. For example, I have friends from all over the world here. I've got friends from uh, Japan, Syria, Vietnam, China, Mexico, Brazil. The diversity of my state is without a doubt my favorite thing about it. Which transitions into the next question that comes from MWG Whispering Tears. They ask, dude, how did you learn so many languages? Honestly, I kind of just guilt my friends into teaching me their language, and I'll just speak to them in that language until I learn what's going on in it. All you need to have a basic conversation in a language is 200 words. That's it. So just like Smash, it's all about those fundamentals and then adding to them. So first you have to learn the difference between F tilt and F smash, and then you can start getting into the frame data. Savage Cabbage asks, what other games do you like besides Smash? Honestly, I play very few games. Games such as Team Fortress 2, Pokemon, Minecraft, and Smash are pretty much it. This transitions into the next question from Zyguardian who asks, what inspired you to main Greninja? Honestly, it was just from my Pokemon background. I think I didn't even get Pokemon X and Y until like three months before Sun and Moon got announced. But I remember back in 2013 saying that I would pick up Froki because I wanted to name him Crazy Frog or Axel F which is a much worse nickname than Lil Pump, as we all know. But yeah, it came from my Pokemon roots that I wanted to play Greninja in Smash. I did have a bit of a character crisis in Smash 4 though, and I was really considering dropping Greninja for Diddy Kong, but it was Ice Studying's performance at Beast that made me really inspired to keep on playing him. Here's a quick one, Frostegi asks, where's the thumbnail Ash Greninja art from? Honestly, I completely forgot about the thumbnail until I was already uploading the guide, so I just DM someone named Happy who had the artist role on the Greninja server asking if he had any art for me to use. And then from there I was like, yep, I'll just put PS2 in the background. I'll link their Twitter in the description for you guys to check out. Snapple asks, why the green skin? I used to be a black alt Greninja because I thought it was a cool shiny, and then I slowly started transitioning away because I thought it was edgy. But I also use different character names, so right now I'm Little Pump. I used to be blue coats because I was a big marching band nerd back in high school, and the blue coats were a marching band that basically took an entire football field and tilted it and marched off of that. And I said, oh man, I'm using tilt controls, how cool is that? And then after that, I changed my name to Kermit and the green alt worked with that, and then I had the epiphany that Lil Pump was the best name possible. Cress asks, how many instruments do you play? All right, right now I can play the tuba, euphonium, trumpet, trombone, piano, cello, and ukulele. So that's seven. What's your favorite Greninja comma that you've pulled off? Sorry, Adam. Guy Fieri himself asks, what's the best story you have about something video game related? Oh man, um, I posted a video about this on Twitter, but I didn't give the full story. So for some reason in the fall semester of my sophomore year of college, we decided to have a once a semester Smash Bros tournament on a Thursday night. I'm in the school's military unit, so every Friday morning I have to no joke get up at 5am. Not to mention, I had an 8am test the next day for multivariable calculus. So obviously I went to the Smash tournament. I played really well, so did my opponent, he got first place, I got second. Tournament finishes, I look down at my watch, it's currently 2am. I'm like, great, I'm not even gonna be able to wake up in the morning. Somehow I miraculously wake up at 4.30 and get out of bed, get ready for our meeting, and then I go downstairs, everyone's waiting outside at 5 a.m. We have the meeting, and then I'm like, all right, whatever, I can close my eyes and go back to bed until the test starts. Wake up, it's fucking 12 in the afternoon. So all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, um, what excuse do I have? All right, I'm sick today. So I type up some, you know, like BS excuse to my professor say, oh my god, I'm sick, I'm going to the doctor, all that, um, can I take the test later? So I'm like, okay, this doctor's, no, not this doctor, this professor's gonna be really strict about the doctor's note, so I have to go to the doctor physically and get a note to prove that I was sick, quote unquote. So I go to the doctor and I'm like, oh, um, I pulled my ankle when running, they want me to get a note to say that I can be excused from today. Get the doctor's note and then I go back and I look at my email, teacher hasn't even responded. I'm like, okay, that's really weird. Monday rolls around and I shit you not, five minutes before the class starts, the professor emails me saying, bring your doctor's note to class, I'll let you take the test after class. I'm like, wow, thanks for being so last minute with that, all right. 
So I gave him the doctor's note and the first thing he says, he looks at me and he goes, so this is fake, right? And I'm like, no, you can like call them and they'll tell you it's real. And he goes, all right, here's the plan. Um, you take the test, I'll call them while you're taking the test. I'm like, all right, whatever. So this guy's going off about like how all the students underperformed on the test and it's not his fault as a professor at all. And while he's ranting, I'm just texting uh, my Brazilian friend in Portuguese. And I'm saying like, yo, um, I'm about to take the test. And she goes, oh, good luck on the test. You'll do great, all that. So he calls me up to his office, says, all right, you can sit outside and take the test. Don't use your phone or anything like that. Or I'm literally just going to like remove you from the school. And I was like, oh, okay then. So I finished the test in the hallway, hand it to him. And the first thing he says to me is, if you're sick again, I'm not going to let you retake the test. And in my head, I'm thinking, no, that, that's totally bullshit. Like, the university says that you can retake a test if you have an excused absence from a doctor. So I'm like, all right, whatever, I just leave his office. So at this point, I'm pretty pissed, so I whip out my phone and send my Brazilian friend an audio message in Portuguese. As I'm sending it and walking down the hallway, this old Chinese guy, the professor, comes sprinting after me. So I'm like, yo, what's up, man? Is everything all right? And he goes, was that Italian? And I'm like, no, that was Portuguese, not Italian. And he goes, who are you talking to? And I said, my friend on Instagram. He goes, are you calling her right now? I said, no, I sent her an audio message. And he goes, uh, play that audio message for me. At this point, I'm thinking, geez, this guy better not speak Portuguese or I'm fucked. So I play the audio message. And here's what it said. Meu Deus do céu, esse professor precisa ir se foder. Não pode ensinar cálculo pra nada, caralho. And then he slowly looks up at me. And he goes... What a beautiful language. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> thank God he doesn't speak Portuguese, dude. I would have been screwed. So I'm just like, oh, thank you. Um, I'll see you tomorrow in class, bye. Get my grade back the next day. Boom, 95, let's go. So smash or pass, more like smash and pass. All right, that's gonna do it for the q and I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's insane how I went from being this to being the Greninja Lab Monster Sensei. But yeah, thank you guys all for sticking around. Honestly, hitting 1K is like insane. Um, we're already at 1,220 subscribers, so I better get this video out before we hit 2K. But yeah, thank you guys all for your continued support. It's honestly amazing to see that there are so many people interested in Greninja and really like the content that I'm putting out. So yeah, stick around because there's definitely a lot more to come. All right, take care you guys. I'll see you all later. Evolution.